Trace Fuqua. Hello, Trace. What is going on down in Owensboro today? Trace is a good American. Timothy, Mark Robbins. Uh, we're going to get to your uh, your question in just a second, Tim. Uh, just want to introduce Mansell Washburn today. Uh, he's here with us on Q&A. He came uh, into the shop for some training. We're doing some installation videos uh, with him, so be waiting, or be waiting for that, whatever I'm trying to say here. Uh, but so today we're only going to be taking questions about clutches, Michigan basketball, or University of Kentucky basketball. That's it. So here we go. Charlie's good American. Charlie from Merchant Automotive. He's a damn good American. Colin, Marcus Miller, all good Americans. And Timothy, Mark Roberts has got the first question. So he says, South Bend Clutch, can you manufacture Hey Paul style pressure plate to match most heavy duty transmissions from Eaton? So I guess that's, uh, can you do Class 8 clutches? Yes, we can. You can do Class yeah. 8 clutches. We do them but all the time. Most of those, they send the clutch into you to be matched up for sizing and whatnot? We, we have them new, ready to ship. Um, okay. You know, a lot of the, the bigger styles, the 15 inchers, they're cast iron pressure plates, so we don't like to ship them a lot because 50-50 yeah, chance they're going to show up broken. Yeah. Um, yeah. But all we do stuff. have all the Class 8 clutches for sure. Okay. And then you all do agriculture clutches too. Everything. If you got an yeah. ag clutch or something. Uh, most guys have to send those clutches in, or can they just send you pictures with measurements? And can you go from that? Or? Um, a lot of that stuff we have ready. Of course, we you know we want to core back on it, but yeah. uh, a lot of them we have ready. Or you can send them in. Okay. Either or. Either or. Yep. Nick Richards is here. Merchant Automotive. Damn fine Americans. Kevin Schaefer's here. Good American. Air Dog. Rob's here. Rob just got his first John Deere yesterday. Good for Rob. Rob's doing a good job. JT Cleaver's here. He's a, he's a communist, but that's all right. Um. Now Trace wants to know, do you all sell a street-friendly triple-disc clutch, or should you stay with the dual disc for a street truck? I guess that's a horsepower question, isn't it, really? It kind of is, and, and honestly, personally, in my opinion, there really isn't a street triple. If you want a street clutch, a street clutch has got to have dampened, sprung-centered disc mm -hmm. in it. That's what makes it streetable. A triple disc has got rigid hubs in it, really made for you know drag racing and sled pulling. Yeah. Can you drive it on the street? Yes, you can. Is it very friendly? No. Absolutely yeah. not. Um, not good on your input shaft, your trans. It's going to make a lot of racket. But to get three discs in that are sprung, there's just not enough room. So that's why I say there is no street triple disc. Yeah. We worked on a truck um, yesterday uh, while Mansell was here that had a triple in it, and we had to do a little bit of input shaft work on it to be able to get it converted over to a different style of disc, too. And your street triples are... I guess what you'd call the Iron Giant disc, aren't they? I mean, it's yes. the same thing that goes in Iron Giant. It's That's a right. non-centered iron clutch power, whatever it is. It's yeah. It's a badass clutch. Centered disc. iron, yeah, centered rigid iron. hub. Yep. Yep, bad stuff. Um, let's see. Okay, here, here we go. This one is Shep Height. Sorry, Shep, if I said your name wrong, man. 12 Cummins Ram with G56. He's done an intake 5-inch, an HS tuner. I can't get on it without the factory clutch slipping. Yeah, I bought a 3250 GK, but have yet to install it. I plan to build the head this summer and install 100% over injectors along with adding EFI Live. Should I have gone with the 3600? That's actually a, uh, a good question. Um, you all, uh, well, talk to just a little bit about that. I mean, really what he's trying to do there, I mean, you're probably going to be at the 650 range anyway. Yeah, he's, um, he's going to be right up there. And, you know, the 3250 is rated at 650 horse, and that's to the ground. Yeah. So, really, it's going to come down to what are you doing with your truck? Yeah. How are you driving it? How's your truck set up is yeah. a really big thing also. Yeah. How is it geared up, tire size, that kind of thing. But, honestly, I think you'll probably be okay with a 3250. Yeah. Yeah, and if if you do a turbo change on that Shep too, I mean that's probably going to be the one thing you know. Just putting a hundred percent over injectors in the truck with H and S tuning, you're going to probably wind up going with uh, custom tuning because you're probably not going to like a box tuner with that. I'm sure at some point you're probably going to change turbos, and then you probably want to look at doing a competition clutch at that point. Then and you yeah, cross then the you're going to have to get up there, yeah. you know, on a bigger one for yep. sure. Yep, clamp load isn't everything. It's, it's not always everything. Really, uh, a lot of people think a big clamp load is what holds your horsepower. Mm -hmm. 
It has some to do with it, but really what holds horsepower is good friction material. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people don't understand that. Absolutely. And run out on the fa- on the surfaces too, on the pressure plate side and the, and the thing. If you've got a you've got a you got bad run out, you don't have an, enough enough clamp or the clamping force on an even uh, on an even surface, you're not gonna get you're not gonna get good engagement. So uh Corey B. Craft, how much power can my sixteen six point seven four make before I do a transmission work, rods and pistons? Uh, Corey, I'll answer that next week, man. Uh, bottom end on that truck. It all depends on the tuning as well. So can't always answer a bottom end question um, without knowing who's doing the tuning on it. ZF6 coming swap dual disc in my truck. Awesome clutch. Very pleased, Justin Smith said. Um, Jason Gentry says, I have an MV5600. I have a single disc South Bend clutch for the last few years. Trans has been hard to shift sitting still. Going down the road, it's fine. 100 horsepower injectors. Please turbo. Do you think the clutch may not be for the power slave cylinder already changed? Hey, he's in a single disc clutch. Um, with this truck probably VP truck. I'd say more than likely he's probably ready to step step. I mean, on he's up. he's probably ready for a small street dual disc. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, you know, and another thing, Jason, that we were talking about this yesterday. If you're having an engagement problem in first and reverse, one thing that you can do on that is go to second before you go to first. If if you're talking about true bulldog, but now if you're having a problem getting it into true second gear, then could be something inside the transmission synchronizer or something like that. It may yes. not be on clutch side. Right. It could be. But if you're talking about bulldog, go to two, then go to one. See what that does for you. Same thing with reverse. Another gear before you go into reverse. Stop the rotation inside the transmission. There you go. Um, Hey, there's Greg Wells Jr. Tell him to get back to work. Greg, you better get your ass to work. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon Napping just rebuilt my '68 RFE. All right, this is a that's a um, that's gonna be an automatic question. But tune from Ryan in Florida. Train tune was and still is causing issues. Can I put another tune on just a training, or does it have to be a full EFI live retune? Uh, Brandon, man, I, if you're talking about um, you know, reach back out to your tuner. Uh, tell him what you've got going on. A lot of guys, you know, we answer a lot of questions about tuning where guys, you know, they, they blame the tuning. or are not saying that's what you're doing, but they say, hey, I've got something wrong with my tuning. Did you ever approach your tuner with the problems and see if there was something to fix it? A lot of guys don't. They just want to go to something else. But um, don't always do that. Uh, that's not always the way. We know, you're, we know you're working, Greg. We know you're working, man. Uh, let's see. Work. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. All right. So here's what we got. Here's what the uh, here's what the talking points are from from Abton, or Adam, the uh, captain up there. Uh, March Madness again. Cats play tonight. Mansell and I will be out in Lexington. So if you happen to be at Harry's Sports Bar and Grill, please come by and buy us a drink. Michigan's playing tonight. And too. Michigan's playing tonight too. So we're going to be there for the seven <laughs> o'clock game. Then we'll be there for the ten o'clock tip. But again, we are open for you all to buy us drinks. So uh, the videos that Mansell and I are doing today. So the first video we shot today, we were talking about the. The uh, organic uh, street dual disc is uh, the first video that we're doing. Uh, we're going to be doing, we're going to talk about um, clutch engagement on another one. I screwed that up because that's not what we're talking about. But i tell you what we are going to be doing. We're going to be installing a clutch, a dual disc clutch in a ZF6 truck. We're going to show you the proper way to stack a clutch together, how to torque down uh, pressure plate and get all of your everything on your install in a dual disc how to do it properly Mansell's going to teach you how to bleed the hydraulics on a, a zf6 truck everything we do is pretty much on dodges because that's 90 percent of the clutches we sell are for dodges right. so we're going to give some love to the chevrolet guys today so check it out uh my duck situation my ducks now think that the dog is their mother so that's pretty cool uh we're going to be giving away a bottle of power shot uh we'll do that here in just a second all right so Paul, nice interpretation, no problem. Uh, it's number two. How come heavy duty clutches, you don't go to a heavier pressure plate with organic material? It seems the trend is to go to some sort of ceramic material or multiple disc. I would think a single disc with a 4,000 pound pressure plate would make for a smooth and streetable combination, though there would be a slight increase in pedal feel. So what, what's a pressure plate on a big disc? And you got two different things going on there. You're the man, tell them. You know, again, with high plate load, yeah, high plate load is gonna help you hold horsepower. But another thing, the higher plate load you get, the stiffer pedal you're gonna get. Yeah. And for, for a street clutch, nobody wants a stiff pedal like that. Yeah. Really stiff pedals like that that are driven every day. It's hard on your thrust bearings, hard on your throwout bearing, and your hydraulics. Right. So 
whenever you can stay away from a really high plate load pressure plate, do it. Stick with a lower plate load and brighter friction material. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, and, and that's true in the big trucks, too. I mean, that's, Absolutely. that's true. Really big anything. Too. Yeah. Oh, is that something? Are we going to give this way yeah, too? Sweet. Too. Okay, cool. All right. Um, Gene says, I got an 11 Duramax with 570,000 miles on. I haul for a living. Seems like the turbo is getting a little tired. What's the best drop in for hauling anything from 25K to 8K pounds? A5 tow to. Uh, there's a ton of different turbos out there, Gene, on that for you. I've got fleece. Uh, uh, ATS makes a, a good turbo. BD's got some good drop in stuff. So give us a call. We'll be glad to. Uh, walk you through some of those. So, um, da, 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 da. Hunter Nelson, he's asking the automatic transmission uh, question today. Uh, look for a race or a ton of horsepower, simple tow tune is all. Do a lot of towing with it. Hunter, we offer uh, full root build kits on most all trans automatic transmissions. You can do drop in transmission as well. We've got most of the uh, major manufacturers. So, uh, Boo Price says, How well will a South Bend dual disc hold an 01 Duramax with ZF6? with Silver Fox tuning, uh, we're about to find out. Bubba Bodiford says, what's up? What's up, Bubba? How's it going in your neck of the woods today? Um, so let's see. Um, one of the questions that we had last week that we, did, we didn't get to answer was from Barry. Barry says, what can I do to block off old lines to fuel tank after I, air, in, after I install an air dog with a GNR sump? That's actually a really good question. Barry uh, Skrillitz, I think is his last name. Sorry if I messed your name up, brother. We offer aluminum uh, line block off plugs that are actually made by GNR as well. We can totally get you in those. Give us a call and we'll get you taken care of on that. Uh, let's see, Bonnie O'Brien last week says, what can cause fuel rail to starve for fuel? 20, 2007 Dodge Ram, 5.9 with the Air Dog 2 and 66 mil Borg Warner Turbo EFI Live. Uh, Bonnie, a couple different things. It, de it depends on what tuning you've got in there. If you've got bigger injectors, if you're running a stock CP3, if you're trying to run a stock CP3 with much bigger injectors and tuning with way too much duration, that's going to pull all of the uh, rail out of it. So it's going to be almost impossible for you to recover with just an air dog. We need a little bit more information on there. So um, there you go. Alex Ayers just joined us. Alex is a good American, and congratulations to you, to the new dad. Cats by nine tonight. Exactly <laughs> right. Blake Aubrey beat Kansas State. You got it. Matt Mayhan joined. Matt is a good American. Um, Adam says we need to talk about Dirty Diana. What are we doing about Dirty Diana? Well, Dirty Diana, when Mansell came to visit us, he saw that Dirty Diana has an automatic transmission in it, and he cried a little bit inside, so that wasn't good. Um, so we're currently in possible negotiations to go to a standard shift transmission. Um, but we're just basically tinkering on the truck right now, working on some fabrication stuff. Um, you know, one of the biggest things uh, about Mansell being here is uh, South Bend is our spotlight manufacturer for the month. Uh, so check out the specials that we've got on South Bend Clutches, which basically translates into we're giving you a free T-shirt uh, with your South Bend Clutch purchase from us uh, this month. So we motivate the shiftless is a shirt. I'm going to give this shirt away today. Uh, in fact, the South Bend shirt's going to Blake Aubrey because Blake is a uh, good Kentucky fan. So Blake, you're getting the South Bend shirt. Congratulations. Ellie O'Neill McGinnis just joined my smoking hot wife. Hello, smoking hot wife. And we are ready to go to dinner now. Uh, Shay Wan. <laughs> <laughs> it says, so what's your thoughts on street car tires on daily driver trucks like proxy 420 nitros lower stretched on wide rims? That's terrible. Uh, Sean, you know that's awful. We don't need to be doing that crap. That's just, <laughs> that's going to be awful, man. Uh, Daryl Arndt says, 2007 3500 dual real wild do dual real wheel Dodge two wheel drive. Best clutch for everyday drivability. Um, Daryl, I guess we need to know if it's a bone stock truck. We're going to treat it like it's a bone stock truck, so Mansell can answer that. I mean, yeah, if it's if it's a bone stock truck, you know, our first level on that, the G56 OK HD, gets you the flywheel upgrade, clutch kit, and a hydraulic assembly. Um, especially if you're going to be doing, um, if, especially if it's a 6.7, if it's a 6.7 and you're going to do some uh, tuning adjustments to it, you're definitely going to want to do uh, at the very least, a street dual disc for sure. Uh, if if he's that. got any tuning on it, yep. if it's a 6.7 with any tuning, absolutely. Yep, yep, absolutely. 
Let's see. Uh, uh, Michael Carolla just puked. I guess we did something to make Michael puke. We apologize, man. Uh, Brian Yetsky said, Dang fuel line leaks back a cab. Only a year old. OH Chevy Duramax diesel crew cab. Sand got in by the clips. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Daryl, okay, so you are stock, so yeah, absolutely. There you go. Uh, Greg Reed, did you drop the trains yet? Greg, you wouldn't know if we dropped the trains if it slapped you in the face. Um, Thoroughbred Diesel says, oh, the vendor spotlight page is there. Oh, the wheel and tire. Oh, thank you. Michael, I didn't know if that was something we did that made you puke, but you're exactly right. <laughs> That's a terrible idea. Sean is a Sean is a good friend of the company. He's a good friend of mine. He's a good friend of the show. I don't think he's serious about that. I really hope he's not serious about that. If he's serious, then he's probably gone a little bit crazy. Sean, you need to come back down here and let us get you back going back on the same track. So, all right. Brian Yetsky, dirt. Uh, okay. I, he might be tires, too. That might have been about the tires. Oh, okay. The tires have got everybody talking today. I see that. Yeah. Um, but da, 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 da. To change, let me make sure that I've gotten everybody's here. So, ba, da, da, da. Uh, yeah. All right. We're in good shape. All right. Um, so, let's see. All right. Cool. There we go. 12 comes intake. Um, can tuning. Stock clutch slips. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Bought the 1350 GK, but haven't installed it yet. Uh, which we answered that ship. Oh, sorry. That's because I scrolled down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 05 Duramax with low miles, 60,000. Still feels new. Had number two and number seven injector harness problems fixed. Any other from the factory issues should be looking for fixed now. Braden, no, not really, man. Um, probably want to do a fuel rail pressure. Um, uh, block off plug in that. Lift pump. Uh, added filtration so you don't have... Um, injector failures, um, you know, all of the EGR upgrades that you can do to that. So, absolutely. Now we got a G56 question. On a G56, is there any way to get clutch engagement earlier? Dual disc with HD hydros. It always seems right at the top of the pedal. We talk about that a lot. Why don't yeah, you talk about that? Just that's, uh, with those trucks, for whatever reason, it's, I'm not going to say it's a common problem, but yep. it's really the only trucks that we get it in. Mm -hmm. Long story short, it's an easy fix. Um, you can call a shop and talk to one of the guys. I can tell you real quick on here. You take the slave cylinder off your bow housing, pull the push rod out of your slave cylinder, the white cap that's on there that pushes against your clutch fork, you want to take that cap off, and that's where you want to make your cut. You don't want to cut it on the part that goes into the cylinder. Yep. Never, never do that. You cut a quarter of an inch off of that rod, put the cap back on, and what that does is it shortens the stroke and makes it grab sooner instead of clear at the top it should bring it back down about the middle where it should be now we used to cut those rods off the part of it that goes back in the slave cylinder i guess you're not wanting that flared into the cut goes back into the slave yeah i mean if you clean it up it. really good yeah. that's fine but not everybody's going to do yep. that they'll cut it yep. off the hacksaw and then shove it in there exactly and then they're going to call us want to know why they're Stuff's yeah, while their slave is leaking, so <laughs> right. for sure. And yeah, in a quarter inch at a time, I, there's you can't say enough about that. It doesn't sound like much on one of those slave on that uh, rod, but a quarter inch is a mile. It is, and you can go too damn far. You go yep. too far, and you think about letting some pressure off the clutch, and the truck's grabbed and it's right. gone. So. Right. Yeah, ab absolutely. Small amounts of time. In fact, you used to tell me an eighth of an inch, but if a quarter inch will do it. Yeah, you can it. do yeah. a quarter. No no more than a half. You get yeah. to a half inch, you got bigger problems. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah, and cut the rod down. Michael Crowler said, uh, BD exhaust manifolds. You're welcome, Michael. Uh, thank you for the question. We appreciate it. Um, let's see. He also said we missed Justin Underwood here. So Justin Underwood says, I have a 2012 Cummins fully deleted. I use it on the farm hauling hay and cattle all the time. Might hook it to a sled at the fair once a year. I'm looking at the new uh, Street Duel, the competition occasional use SDD 3600. What would you recommend? How is the drivability as far as engagement? I don't want to jerk the livestock around too bad. That's a good question. Uh, he's, he's got is that an SSDD he's got on there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's got the Super Street. That's yeah. The Super Street's definitely the one that you want if you want to sled pull occasionally and still drive it. Mm -hmm. Now, is the cattle and horses going to like it? I guess it all depends on who's driving the truck. It does. That's um, right. You know, you're backing up a big trailer full of full of animals. I mean, you're going to want to you know more RPM and let up on the pedal a little slower yeah. to get it to be smooth, but. 
for me to say that that's a smooth, engaging clutch, you won't have no problems. I can't say that because that, that's a big clutch. Yeah. So you know you got to give and take a little bit there with a clutch like that, but it will do everything you want it to do. And that's a and that's a really common uh, question, uh, honestly, Justin. As a lot of people want that, but you. If you're going to hook to that sled, that's the one violent event that's going to happen in a clutch. Is like, I mean, if you drive like an idiot day to day, if you drive like a maniac day to day, then that's one thing. But if you drive normal, if you're hauling cattle, hauling equipment, hook to a gooseneck all the time, there's 99% chance that you're probably a pretty good driver anyway. You go to hook that sled, doesn't matter how good of a driver you are, that's the one violent event in that clutch's life. It's going to take a hell of a lot of beating to it. You're going to be losing clutch material. You have a ch- you stand a chance of overheating the clutch, warping the crap out of everything. Once you start getting warpage, you lose run out. You're going to start having bad wear on the clutch, so on and so forth. But that's why the 3600 was born. That's why the Super Street was right. born, was to be able to go to the county fair, make a hook, you know, two or three hooks a year. Hopefully, maybe it's just one or two. You go out there to impress your girlfriend or whatnot and that clutch is going to live for you but yeah, you're not going to be able to wind it up problems. yeah you can't but you're not going to still not going to be able to wind that clutch up and i don't know and manson may tell me i'm wrong here but you're still not going to be able to spin that truck to 5,000 rpm and dump the damn clutch on it uh you know there's going to be that yours there's even the super street disc clutch is going to have threshold to it so if you think you're going to make more than a couple hooks a year man you need to go with competition to do this, yep, so. for sure yeah Sterling Harper's here. Sterling Harper's a damn good American. Uh, Michael Corolla. Kevin's from uh, Air Dogs says, Man, so I have a South Bend clutches in both my 24 valves and his TDI, and he loves them. Sorry, wait, I'm rooting for my Purdue Boiler Makers. Kevin, ain't nothing, ain't nothing <laughs> going on for Purdue. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Earl Brothers says, I have a 99 Ram 3500 4x4 with South Bend 3255K dual disc. I love it. Do you want me? To message to Lenny, read it Dynamite Diesel here in Hayden, Idaho. What? I love it. Do you want me to relay a message to Lenny Reed at Dynamite Diesel here in Hayden, Idaho? Uh, I don't know if Mansell's got anything he wants to send to Lenny. I'm, there's a couple of things I'd like to send to Lenny, but this is a favorite family show. Uh, Lenny's good people. Lenny promised me he's going to take me to the bar up there in the woods in Coeur d'Alene or some crap. We're going to get beer. You got to go there on a snowmobile. I don't know. Does uh, Lenny even lift, bro? Does he even lift, bro? Where's your <laughs> neck, bro? Where's your neck, bro? We're dead. I'm so dead. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, Michael guy said my favorite switch was to dual Kevlar over ceramic for trailers. Hold power all day. 6380 compounds. Golly, that's plenty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. <laughs> you might want to for think sure. about a competition one. All right. 01 F250, and I had the cycle glow plugs about five to ten minutes to get it start. New glow plug relay, new glow plug starter. Does does does. Bye bye. Can't seem to figure it out. Thanks, Zach. You probably got something going on high side oil pressure system, man. Um, Joe Evans, what are three electronic plugs on the 6.7 PCM? Uh, they're just going through different things inside of the motor. Uh, Joe, you've got one bundle of it that's going to go to all the map sensors and or all so, so different sensors, and it's it just all going to different sectors of, of sensors. So I don't even know if that's a word or not, sector of sensors. Um, it might be. It might be. We'll, <laughs> we'll go with that. Uh, another sale that we've got going on right now is free shipping on Suncoast transmissions, which is a really, really big sale. So that's good if you guys are looking at an automatic transmission, even though Mansell's here. Uh, we've got free shipping on Suncoast right now. Uh, you know what? Um, I'm going to announce my Power Shot winner. Power Shot, Power Shot is thoroughbred diesel fuel additive. If you're not running Power Shot, you're pretty much a terrorist. Don't be a terrorist. Run Power Shot. So I'm going to give the Power Shot away to Michael. Uh, let's see, Michael Corolla. Is that was Michael Corolla? Yeah, uh, yeah. Michael Corolla was the guy that we talked about cutting down the rod. That was actually a really, really good question. We feel that question a lot. I'm going to give the power shot to Michael. So Michael got the power shot. My other buddy got the South Bend shirt. Uh, there you go. Tasha Oswalt, do your clutches work in red trucks or just the blue trucks? Just the blue trucks. Just the blue trucks. <laughs> we don't ever put them in the in the in the. Yeah, that's I, it. All right. I caught uh, there messing with her today. <laughs> I got her pretty good. Uh, Tasha, go back there and see if Greg's working today. <laughs> so, uh, who was this? Jonathan Colby Daly. Can you hook to a sled with 3250 ceramic maybe a couple of times? No. I don't recommend it. <laughs> My answer is I'll no. I'll say I don't recommend it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, all right, Paul Stewart, Stewart says, I don't know if I would go to a bar in the woods with Lenny. Yeah, you're exactly right. <laughs> I realized when I was selling that story, I was like, ah, yeah, that was probably too much. So just tell, just ask him if he lives. He don't live. Um, Joe Evans is done by bye. I can do fits on switch the duel. I think we got it, Mansell. I think we're up on it, yeah. All right, man. Yep. I think we got it. If you guys don't have any more questions for Mansell, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sign off for the day. Uh, Make sure that on the thing. Oh, Timothy. All right. One more question. Do you make a greasable throwout? That's actually a really good question, and, and we're going to talk about that. Do you make a greasable throwout bearing after 140,000 miles of bearing fails due to no lubrication? 100, running 160, 170K annually? Golly, I have had to pull a transmission five times. In four and a half years, I've owned it just because of throwout bearing. Granted, I've always gotten really good at pulling a G56, but doing that every 8 to 10 miles, but it's a good ball. Yeah, exactly right. Three and a half years in your G56 HD single disc is still going strong. That's awesome. Man. Awesome. So, awesome. Uh, to speak to the throwout bearing, and I'll let Manslow on that, but I want to just uh, talk about it for a thing. Most things that are greasable, you over grease them. Uh, a lot of people grease things, and it doesn't matter if we're talking about tractors or whatever, they grease until the until grease runs out the fittings. That's completely the wrong way to grease anything. I know, you know, maybe your grandpa taught you this or whatever. Nothing personal against anybody, but that's not how you grease anything. If you grease something until you see grease running out of orifices, you've over greased it. You have blown seals out, and you have a, you have you have opened up a way for water and dirt intrusion. Same thing with throwout bearings. Yes. If it's greasable, you're going to get grease slung inside the bell housing. You're going to get it on the clutch. You're right. going to get a. Ba- it's going to be get, be a bad it's, problem. Yeah, so. that's that's one reason why we haven't yeah. really concentrated on a way to come up with a greasable throwout bearing for yeah. that. A lot of the agricultural stuff that we do have come to the shop with greasable throwout bearings. There's half a tube of grease yeah. pretty much everywhere that never should be. Exactly. Because just what you were saying, people just over grease it. Yeah, over grease it. Yeah. So yeah, is it would it be something that worked? Yeah, but it's got it would have to be something that works that you almost have to have training on. It, it would, yeah, yeah, but you would have to just hope that everybody does it right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, Michael Corolla says, "What's your best answer for the garbage carrier bearing on the two piece shaft in 2010 G56?" Michael, if you can find a good drive shaft builder that'll build you a one piece drive shaft. <laughs> that might be the way to go. Ship, you're a good American. Go cast. Nathan Snyder's a damn good American. Go cast too. Ag clutches are nightmares. Greg loves ag clutches. We're yep. selling them every one to you, Greg. All right, boys. Don't even get it. a go blue from Greg. Yeah, he ain't gonna know nothing on go blue. Nothing on go blue. Uh, did Dasha say go blue? She didn't say go no, blue. No, I, I don't think she did. She might have. All right. That's it for this week, boys. Like and click um, on our Facebook page. Click the live notification button on or whatever that crap is. South Billion Clutch, they've got an awesome Instagram page right now. They've really revamped that, so check that out. They put some stuff up that's going on around the shop, whatnot. Sometimes Greg's smiling face is on there. Um, I guess I'll see you next week, but my buddy Mansell, he won't be here, but thank you for coming down, man. We appreciate it. We've had a great time. Guys, check us out next week. If you got any questions, please give us a call. Thanks for watching.